Hey, what's going on you guys? All right, today we're gonna to talk about airing down, when, why, and for what terrain, how, how much. All right, so this is a topic that comes up uh, when I go out with, with folks, comes up time and time again, and it comes up because the answer is not totally clear, so it seems hard to get the right information about when to air down, when to air up, and, and why. The reason is because it completely depends on your vehicle, your weight, the terrain, your wheels. Let's go through some of it. Um, so you see that I have a large sidewall, right? So I have a large sidewall. This is a 16-inch rim, and I've got a, a 315 75R16 tires on here. And when you're going to be off-road, you do want a deep sidewalls. So if you see those, the, the big wheels and a little rubber band of rubber, around it. You wouldn't want to take that off road because you don't have the sidewall necessary. You're going to damage your rim. Uh, it's dangerous, a number of other things. So the first thing is that you want a, you want a nice sidewall. The other thing is how heavy are you? Those are all going to determine by how much you should air down. Now I'm going to give you some guidelines, but before we get into that, why do you air down? The reason you air down is because you are increasing the contact patch on the ground. This tire right now, I've got it aired down to about 14 PSI. Now, um, the, you can see that on, along the bottom, it's slightly bulged out. And what that does is it increases the contact patch. Now, most people, because common win wisdom, they think, well, I'm aired down so my tire is wider and that gives me more, more traction. Um, that's true, but what makes a bigger difference is the contact patch front to back because you're actually increasing the contact patch much more in that direction than in the width. And you'll see when a tire goes over a rock on the trail, it kind of wraps around that rock and it's, there's much more rubber um, on the ground. Now, does it really make a difference? Absolutely. I mean, you hear people out there say, man, yeah, he probably would have made that with no problem if he uh, had his had his tires aired down. Uh, and it's true, it really does make a big difference. The other thing, you'll see guys out there and um, you'll see smoke pouring off their tire and the wheels are spinning, trying to get up an obstacle. You know, if you've got a lot of tire pressure, if you're up there at 45 PSI or street pressure, then your, your tire will slip. You don't have the contact patch and there'll be a lot of tire spin, a lot of just drama on the trail. So by airing down, you'll have that grip and you can move slowly over the obstacle. So that's why you want to decrease your tire pressure when you're off road. Now, some guidelines. Go back to the beginning. Why are we doing it? Increase the, the the patch that has contact with the ground. So it really doesn't matter whether you are in sand or you're on rock. Uh, it, it, you're just trying to increase the contact patch. What I will say is that you really feel a difference between street pressure and say 22 PSI um, in terms of comfort in the cab. It really does make a difference. You're not as bouncy. You don't feel every little pebble on the trail. So if you just go down to 22 PSI, which is very modest, then you're going to have a better ride and you are increasing the contact patch slightly. So if you're just on a gravel road, you're not doing a lot of technical off-roading, but you're just on a rough gravel road, come down to 22 PSI. You're going to soften the ride, you're going to increase your contact patch, and you're going to get better performance. The assumption there is that you're not at street speeds either, so you're not going 65 miles an hour. Um, you can do that, but you want to know your tire and your wheel combination very well. So take Baja, for example. You're screaming down the sand, and you're running at a specific pressure. Not only the wheels and the tire, the, the wheels and tires are very well known and designed to do just that. Now, when you get onto a technical trail, whether it be uh, sand or, or, or rock crawling, you can come down much further. I generally air down to 14 to 12 PSI, but I can go down to five and even zero tire pressure. And you'll hear guys say, I run at zero. Now, something to consider if you're running that low, you should know the characteristics of your wheel and tire. In lore, 
And in my personal experience, this factory stock 16 inch rim does not roll tires off the rim. The BF Goodrich KM3 is also a, a very good tire, a very durable and rigid tire for airing down. Rolling off the rim, what does that mean? There are some wheels that are known for slipping tires where your tire, when it's aired down and you're on a trail, will actually roll off the rim. So then you've got no tire pressure, your wheel is resting against the ground and you have to deal with getting this rubber tire back on the rim, which is a difficult process. Now, before we summarize, let's talk about the how. This little thing right here. There are many ways to air down tires. Um, ARB has a, um, a tire pressure gauge where you push a button and it, it will begin to release air. It removes the valve stem core. And I don't like that. It's complicated. I'll just tell you, I don't like pulling my valve stem core every time I want to air down. Is it fast? It's pretty fast. Yep. But you also have to stay by the tire. Now you also have the very simple tire pressure gauge with the thing on the back of it that you know, will, will air down your tire, but that takes a long time. And again, you have to stick by the tire. So you see these caravans of, of rigs off on the side of the road with everybody airing down. They're there for 10 or 15 minutes every time they want to do it. That's why I like this. It's Ston. No, not sponsored. This is just what I use. Um, there are Smitty built tire deflators. They don't work as well. You get what you pay for. Those are about 30. These are upwards like on a good day, like $65 for this set. But in this case, you really do get what you pay for. So what is a Ston tire deflator? So basically you see that, that this turns and then it's got a calibration ring and you turn it half a turn. And I believe that is a full PSI. Um, and so you set your tire pressure and then you screw this on the valve stem that's it you walk away it will stop when it reaches the tire pressure that it is set for so if i calibrate this you hear that it just stopped and now it will stay at that pressure and what that means is that when you hit the the trailhead you jump out of your rig you screw this on, one on each wheel. There are four. Jump back in the truck and drive. You're not waiting for anything. And that's why I like these so much. I don't have to sit there and air down every single tire and wait. I can just do it um, by screwing it on and then I continue driving. Now, the caveat, common sense, but I'll go ahead and say it. <laughs> I don't mention the common sense stuff a lot. And then, my friend the internet, well, you know, you really shouldn't, it's common sense. If you're going to be on a trail where this can get hit or you're on a rocky trail where a rock can peel that off, well, it's going to yank out your valve stem and your tire is going to deflate that fast. So if you're going to be on a rough trail or this can get hit, don't screw them on and then go driving because, well, you're going to flatten your tire. Now, hopefully you guys all have tire repair kits. If not, get one. And uh, you also have the means to replace your valve stem because valve stems do get torn off and you wanna be able to replace your valve stem. So you should have that equipment as part of your normal kit. Okay, so that is tire deflators and airing down. Now let's summarize. I'm going down a mild gravelly road and I've got a good sidewall and a, a nice strong tire and I'm not going to be at highway speeds. Air down to 18 to 22 PSI. You're going to soften the ride. You're going to increase your contact patch and you can cruise at a pretty good speed at that tire pressure. Um, you get into sand, you might want to air down a bit far, further, even, uh, even uh, you know, 14 PSI. You're going to increase your contact patch even more. You get on rock and your wheel and tire combination will handle it. You can go down to five PSI. And as I said, some guys roll at zero, but that's what bead locks are for, right? I'm comfortable going down to five in uh, with this combination.
but bead locks sandwich the tire bead between the the tire and the and the and the and the rim and so the tire isn't going to slip off so they can run really low pressures um so uh you just have to you just have to know that you can run really low but then again you're at slow crawling speeds now let's talk about when you air down and air up airing up is a consideration you know you go down to the um the local automotive store and you get you know a relatively inexpensive compressor and for a tire like this it could take nine minutes to air this tire up from 12 to 32 psi which is the minimum street pressure so keep that in mind nine minutes times four right uh, you're going to be there for a while airing up your tires there are other options there's the 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 twin arb compressor which is really good but recently i've really liked Viair. and when i say i really like something the reason i say i really like it is because in our community, 25,000 strong, I hear only good things. When I hear about products failing, eh, it kind of goes into that not so great category. Haven't heard a lot of bad things about the Viair compressors. Other people like the CO2 um, uh, power tank that will air this up right away, really fast. So those are some different options when you're thinking of... Hey, buddy. Hi. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. How's it going? What you doing? <laughs> Uh, groceries? Groceries. Can you, un no, you okay. can't help unload, can you? Five minutes? Ten uh, minutes? No, I'll get me gone. Okay. I'll get me gone. Cool. <laughs> the one take wonders. Okay. These are one take wonders. <laughs> All right. Um, hi. Okay. Okay. Uh, hi, YouTube. Bye, okay. YouTube. Okay. Groceries. Oh, tomorrow. Grocery time. Did tomorrow. you get Rocky Road? No, but I got stuff to cook with. To, I got steaks. Steaks tomorrow. Tomorrow is the cooking video where we're going to cook with various uh various types of equipment um you guys know we're doing a video a day, a day. these are one take wonders i hope you guys can be patient with me <laughs> okay uh many ways to air tire back up um power tank compressors uh the power tank is very fast the trade-off is that once that tank is empty it's empty whereas a compressor always has air right that's your trade-off um Okay, I think that's the summary. Uh, so as you can see, depending on your sidewall, depending on the rim, depending on the terrain, there are so many parameters that it's really hard to say exactly how much uh, and when to air down your tire. But no, oh, I have one more point. You guys can drive on the pavement aired down. Here's the thing. Not at highway speeds. And not if you're really aired down far. But if you're running 22 PSI, it's okay to drive on the road. But just know you're going to have more lateral, move, uh, more lateral movement in the vehicle. And you don't want to have to be maneuvering with aired down tire, tires because it's dangerous. But if you've got to go a quarter mile down to camp, it's okay to drive on the, on the pavement with an aired down tire. Um, you know, the only reason I, I, I see that is the only reason I say that is because I've, I've seen folks come off the trailhead, sit there for 15 minutes, airing up their tire, drive a quarter mile, get off the road, come back on the trail the next day, air down. You guys can drive a little ways. Um, it, it just means that your tire is going to wear a little more differently. Um, you, you know, you're going to start seeing the sidewall worn a little bit more. Mine are worn anyway because I'm driving them off the off the off road all the time. But you can do it. Just be cautious. Don't be at highway speeds and know that you're going to wear your tire accordingly if you drive with them aired down on the pavement. All right, you guys. I hope that was really useful. We will see you tomorrow. I hope you guys are are safe and sane given uh, how long we've been we've been sheltered in place and uh, uh, I, I hope this was uh, informative. All right, you guys. Oh, in the comments, would you guys do me a favor? Tell me your tire uh, and and the the pressures you run in what terrain because we can build a library, a small library of different pressures and, and tire types and it will it will help it will help people out and we can comment on it, et, et cetera. All right, you guys, see you tomorrow.